Uh, what interpretation we are giving to this outcome? Yes. They are only saying that the speaker doesn't have the power to declare seats yes. within the power that he's clothed with yes. in the chamber. Yes. So basically it means that if you want to contest somebody's position to still hold himself or herself as a member of parliament while taking these actions, you go to the high court, right? Yes, I think basically that's what they said. But before I come to that, let me just give some preliminary response. To you this. only have three minutes, sir. Uh, three minutes, okay, I'll come to that. Uh, when you see my colleague NDC, the opening, so you just know that the first opening part, they were actually acting. All the NDC communicators have been trained that when you do opening, you stay true to your common socialist rules by praising uh, John Mahama and condemning uh, uh, what they call a Baumia before you start. So this, the first part was acting. Um, the second part, I would come to your question very quickly. Um, and then I also respond to my colleague here who say, what is the implementation now? As I've already said, I kept mentioning to general principles of law recognized by civilized country. If we hold ourselves out as a civilized country, all that we need, just need to do is to implement it as the court says. In other words, everything has been reversed to the status quo that was there before the speaker made his ruling. That when you have the opportunity to go back to parliament, all that you need to do is the minority resume their side, majority resume their size. Yes, so here, as we said, my, Professor Mike Quay was wrong in that interpretation. Saying that the Speaker Parliament now is wrong doesn't mean we have breached any principles. You see, court is passive. You have to come to them before they will act. The Supreme Court cannot be popping their nose, finding out, do you have a case for me to resolve? Somebody will need to knock their doors. So the fact that nobody knocked their doors when Professor McQuay was made that particular ruling does not mean if you knock their doors now, they will not say they will not make that ruling. So let's get that right. Another one would be the principles aspect. I mean, you can't argue. I mean, I, I failed to see where my colleague was talking about principles. It's actually John Hama who doesn't have principles. If you look at the electoral commission case, for example, is that a principal person? When he was a president, he said, state your case and let the electoral commission decide. He is now in opposition, and he's saying the electoral commission must subject themselves to audit, and they should follow what the NDC say. So this is actually a good example of a president who does not follow principles. So for me, and then allegation to that, if you marking is not a good leader. I mean, if you listen to him recently, if you, if you listen to him recently, the point that he made clear is that he has tried over the weekend to engage with the speaker. He has tried. He has used chiefs. He has made several phone calls to the speaker. The speaker will not pick his phone calls. The intermediary, the speaker was picking the intermediary phone calls. Then let us say, come and see me in the office on Monday. The whole of Monday, he spent time in speaker's office. Speaker didn't turn up uh, to his office. What do you want him to do? At the end of it all, the constitution anticipate that one day we'll have some disagreement. And that when you have the disagreement, the right for him to go is the court. It doesn't mean we cannot do political engagement. Yes, we will still do political engagement, but the speaker will need to implement this in the interest of the country. Right now, I am troubled that he is not doing so in the interest of the country. And what they are really doing is that they are providing role modeling to several citizens. Because if you are in parliament making law, expecting citizens to obey, and you are refusing to obey the provisions of the constitution and order from, from the Supreme Court, it will not surprise me one day if a litigant turned out to court and said, I refuse to obey the laws parliament has made because that very parliament is How do you draw that conclusion? If you refuse to obey constitutional provision, somebody go to the Supreme Court and you say you will not obey, you will not implement it. Who, who has said they will, they will no, not obey? I, what I'm saying is that if the are you, speaker are you, are you speaking fails, about a, a hypothetical? No, I am talking about now that the Supreme Court has spoken, I expect the speaker and any other member of parliament to comply with it. Very well. And I'm saying that if you fail to comply with it, 
you are more or less telling citizens that you can always disobey the law. You are training huge number of uh, citizens to be civil disobedience. You say you will not obey. Because if you, you will not have the moral right to tell people to obey the laws you make. When you yourself will not, is refusing to obey others by the court. So for me, and as for you, look, what about I don't want to even direct, uh, well, your response, look, one and a half years ago, we were together. <laughs> Please, there's always opportunity to come back home. To come back me, to I don't have problem with to, many to come back of you. To the movement. Yes, I, to come back but home. But you are not the ready MPP, to come to the movement. But the I MPP to come is your I don't have problem with you at all. So you all. come to the movement. 